embedded the last few comments in a, in a sort of wrap-up reply, but I think the idea of interconnectivity that was mentioned helps bring on board the one aspect where I think law still needs to be stationary in a way. I mean, I very much agree with this assessment. Adaptation is very much challenging the idea that law should say what we are supposed to do in a very fixed manner. So that part of the law, that certainty in the law is what is being challenged. And, and the idea exactly of regulating by information, looking at goals rather than specific substantive obligations, that seems to be changing. But I think there is one part of the law and the certainty the law brings that should remain. And it's really that the allocation of responsibilities and the creation of long-term incentives that is where the law brings a certainty that then uh, actually can, can create an engine for adaptation and for flexibility in, in terms of substantive regulation of the environment. So I think those are very much um, the, the part of, of law that remains uh, necessary in terms of providing the certainty to authorities, the certainty to users and to investors uh, as to their roles in this more complex world in which uh, we can no longer look at the law to know what we are supposed to do, but uh, we see goals towards which we have to work uh, to the best of our capacity in a continuous information gathering and self-assessment and self and, and continuous revision of, of practices uh, process. So I think the idea of looking at clear responsibilities and more ambitious perhaps responsibilities and, and long-term incentives um, is perhaps uh, a way to look at you know, what kind of certainty remains within the law that we need in working towards adaptation. resource 
that goes in depth for a variety of laws and policies and um, reforms that managers and legislators can use to adapt biodiversity. We also developed a strategic options paper for decision makers. And that, that's much shorter that explains why law is important. These are available free of charge. So the URL is provided in also next. The resource manual has three parts. It starts uh, with the key elements of adaptive ecosystem-based management. This part reflects a lot of the elements that Elisa highlighted in her presentation. The second part introduces legal, regulatory, and planning tools. And then the third part applies these tools in four specific areas. <coughs> Permitting, licensing, and concessions. Community-based natural resource management. <coughs> protected areas. <coughs> and private lands conservation. Next. So the key elements, uh, these are somewhat similar, um, but I think one of the answers to Alejandro's dilemma is in defining clear goals. And this will not solve the problem, but it's part of the solution in defining what the goals of the legal framework are. And there are many ways to get there, but it needs to be consistent with those goals. At the same time, introducing flexibility, and I'll go into that in a little bit, the importance of data. And for those of us who have just worked on regular environmental law, data is usually the lowest, one of the lowest priorities in environmental management. If, you, if an agency does not have sufficient money, one of the first things to know is monitoring and data collection. The, uh, Elements of learning and cooperation and accountability are also things that Elisa covered in her presentation. Next, please. There are a variety of frameworks for adaptive management. Um, and there's active adaptive management and passive adaptive management. You can experiment or you can um, just go through a kind of a regular process. But it usually starts with some sort of assessment. What is the situation? What are your goals? And then you design a legal and policy framework to meet that. And you implement it. All of this is pretty standard for biodiversity management. This, this is not new. But then we need to make sure that the measures that were designed and implemented are effective. So we need to monitor. We need to monitor what's being done, and we need to monitor the state of biodiversity, and periodically evaluate. Are we moving in the right direction? Do some of the tools overcompensate? Are they sufficient? Are they insufficient? And then you make adjustments to the regulatory policy frameworks. And then you implement, you monitor, evaluate, adjust. And periodically, it is necessary and advisable to reassess the goals. Are you still asking the right questions? And redesign the framework. Next, please. Public participation and stakeholder engagement is central. And I think that we can cover this uh, nicely. Next. There are six functional areas in establishing adaptive legal frameworks. And a lot of countries already have some of these. What they don't have is an overarching adaptive management framework set forth in the law. So there's visioning and planning. Collection and management of information. Periodic review, coordination of policies and activities, compliance, I'm sorry, if I'm, uh, next please. Uh, 
Um, sorry, I, I, I need to take a break. Can you, sorry, Warren, can you uh, introduce the breakout groups? Questions are up, are up there now. 